Welcome to Writing Walks. I'm your host, Alex E. Talander. It is Tuesday, April 14th, 8.33 a.m. And today I am at the Southern Laguna Discovery Trail. Today I'm going to be talking about the state of me, and a little later talking about outlines. That was the one that topic that won the poll, and I'll be ending it off with a recommendation. It's almost hard to fathom that a month ago I did last writing walks. I think it was about a month ago, maybe up to six weeks. And it's just a totally different world now. I wasn't sure if I was going to have to start doing the writing walks from home because all the state, regional, and local parks are all closed. There are some trails that are open. So I just had to do a little research and finding a, one that was relatively nearby because I didn't want to go too far away. I had to make sure it wasn't going to be too busy. I actually noticed this one last week. I was driving by and saw some cars grouped around this area. And then I looked it up on the map and saw it was a trail. So the plan was to come over here in the morning and if there weren't any cars in the way, I knew it wouldn't be crowded, so I'd be able to do the walk there and keep up the social distancing, avoid contact with people. And that's where I am right now. It's been a long four weeks. That latter half of March felt like it was about a half year. Just the first week of April felt like another half year. My creativity has pretty much dropped to below minimum, barely anything. After the first week or two, I kept trying to keep to my regular writing schedule with my set days for doing each project. Some days I would get some stuff done, and other days I'd be all set to do it. Everything arranged how I wanted it, and it just wouldn't happen. And I just had to accept it and do something else. And I think it was really the days when I worked on my novel. So we got a pure fiction project, pure creativity that I really started to notice that something was off. Not necessarily wrong, but off and different, not quite right. And then I realized while this world-changing event had happened, things were different for me, but I was still, I'm still working full-time as a mail carrier still keeping my schedule the same way and trying to keep to my creativity and writing schedule in the same way. The kid is staying at home now, obviously, and doing homeschooling, but he still goes down to bed at the same time. We're still trying to keep the same schedule for everything. So with that, I just assumed I'd be able to keep my same writing schedule and creativity like I've been doing, because I was doing the same stuff 
even though the world was falling apart all around me. But then it was like after the first week, week and a half, and again, especially when I was working on the novel, that I was starting to realize it had changed for me too inside. My creativity had all but disappeared because of what had been happening. Because of this stress of everything going on that I was feeling and not really acknowledging. I thought it was okay, and it wasn't. And even though I wasn't physically manifesting the stress and the emotions that I was going through, it took me to see it through my lack of creativity to realize that I was experiencing it in a different way. I was processing it in a different way. I've always been a extreme optimist, I'd say, always looking for the bright side of everything, the positivity, the hope and future for everything. And I've definitely been doing the same with this whole worldwide event and trying to keep positive on top of things for my family, for my co-workers, and for me too, because it's how I get through life. It's worked for me. So I was saying everything was fine, I should be able to just write, right? Well, that wasn't the case. And it was like, I tried to work on the novel, that never happened, and then it started spreading to the other projects too. And I found I just didn't want to work on anything. And it's taken a good two to three weeks to just come to accept that, to realize We're all going through the same thing. We're all experiencing it on various levels. But it's all the same event. It's all going to affect us in certain ways, in different ways. But I've noticed online that it seems with creatives, it's all affecting us very similarly. We have lost our drive in a lot of cases, our will to be creative and make new things, especially with fiction. Last night, I was actually able to write a little fiction, a little ostium piece I've been wanting to do for a month or so now. And it's the first bit of writing I've done, probably about a month, yeah. I've done one book review. It's not quite the same thing, but it is writing in a way, but it's not creative. The creating a story. So it's a little easier, I find, than fiction writing but I was able to churn out some words last night and I think it's taken me this long to reach a point of acceptance with the way things are I think the biggest thing that's affected me and probably a lot of people is the uncertainty not knowing where we're going to be, not just in a year or six months, but in a month's time or even a week's time. Things have changed so fast and continue to. It's like having a newborn that changes day to day. You're not sure what new event or discovery you're going to make the next day. But I feel like I've reached a kind of peak crescendo, much like a number of towns and cities and countries across the world have with their cases of coronavirus. And I've reached a level where I'm able to now move on a bit and be creative again. Feel it. Feel the creativity filling back up in me. And to be able to be creative again. 
I'm fully acknowledging to myself that it may be something that may not be constant. Thinking of it as like a magic power source. I've been reading the Wheel of Time series, which has this magic power that people can draw from and it's never ending. Which seems a little lazy to me, but usually with magic systems you want to have a limitation on it. I definitely feel that's going to be the case with my creativity, where I can take what I can from it and be creative. But there's only going to be so much to be creative with, so much creative power to take. And some days, maybe even some weeks, there's going to be nothing there, and I'm just going to have to accept that and let it go for that time. It's been kind of interesting that I've found a deficit of creativity in fiction, but I've been really enjoying losing myself in fictional worlds, reading stories, and I heard actually from a professor and psychologist that that's one of the ways of dealing with what we're going through right now, too, is to lose yourself for a while in fictional worlds, whether it's reading a book or playing a video game. This has worked for me. Played plenty of video games. I'm working on developing characters and being creative in that way. And also losing myself in stories. It's definitely helped a lot. It just gives you a break from the world for a while. Which is definitely healthy and can be revitalizing. I feel this is a situation that's just working for me. It may not be something that continues to work. I may have to go through a period again of no creativity and reach a new point to be creative again. But I hope it helps any of the listeners listening in to get through their struggles and what they're coping with. I do feel it's also completely okay to say I'm just not writing anything. I'm not going to be creative until this whole thing is over. And I can be in a good frame of mind, a healthy frame of mind again, to do it. I think that's a completely acceptable choice. And you cannot be put at fault for making that choice. It's a good trail. Might have to use this more often. I'll see. It depends on how many trails I can find. I might end up doing doing this one a few times now, depending on how long this goes on. I could talk a lot about the coronavirus and my thoughts and issues and questions and ideas around it all, but I don't think so. I don't think that's the right place here. So let's move on to our next topic. So this is one where I put up a poll and I think I'll be doing this from now on for future episodes, as I said before last time. Um, so the one that won is Outlines this time. I've heard every story and version from authors, best-selling to first-time writers about Outlines. And it runs the gamut of choices and ideas when it comes to outlines and I think like any piece of writing advice like I've said before you can take it and you can apply it with your writing style and your writing process and you have to be willing to accept that it's not going to work and it might be something that won't work for a particular project too it only works on some projects and not on others and you just have to be willing to toss it out and go with something else. I can remember, uh, I think it was my, might have been my, actually it was my first big novel I attempted, which I did not finish, I don't think, no, but it was a book, I believe it was called The Marshall Plan, and in there was an insanely detailed outline that you need to construct for your novel. And again, I think this is something that works for a number of writers. 
best selling and otherwise. And it was down to, you know, each section has a detailed paragraph on what is going to happen in that part of the book. Each chapter is painstakingly laid out with the conflict and the highs and lows, the emotions, the themes, and the plots and subplots going on in those chapters, those parts of the book, and full character sheet outlines too with minute details on all your characters and breaking it all down. I think this might be something helpful for someone tackling a novel for the first time, just to kind of put a lot of your ideas on paper to hone it down so that you know exactly what the story is you're trying to tell, because it can feel certainly overwhelming and overbearing when attempting a novel, knowing how big of, of a project it is compared to a short story. So having it all kind of laid out like that helps give you structure and direction and drive in some ways. For me, I've found over the years with various novel projects that I do like having an outline, but I don't need it insanely detailed. The novel I'm currently working on, and this is been the last few novels I think I have a big paragraph maybe 500 to even a thousand words usually about 500 words detailing what's either going to happen in the chapter or that section of the book because I feel I've gotten good at keeping it all in my head and the structure and the story I want to tell so I don't really need the painstaking pages of detail and outline. I need it mainly for when I'm going to start writing the chapter and for when I come back to continue writing the chapter and need to reference. I want to read back over what I've written, but also know kind of what's going to happen, what the story I was trying to tell what the chapter was. I read over what I've already written and then I go over that outline part to know what my goal was with the chapter, what I was trying to tell with the chapter or the part to keep it fresh in my mind. I'll usually find that it's, uh, especially if it's been a little while since I've been working on the project, that reading that little outline will kind of kickstart all the thoughts and ideas about the book almost like it's opening the section of my brain where I have that book to be able to access it all and know the story I want to tell. So that's what works for me. I do find, I think, coming towards the ending, I usually don't have it fully planned out, so there's less detail towards the end, and I want to discover that more for myself as I'm writing the story through the characters. So that's my thoughts on outlining. Again, it might not work for some people. It might work great for some people. I do think a detailed outline is a helpful structure and roadmap for working on your first novel. Because it is intimidating. It is a huge project to take on. And so giving yourself the framework of an outline can certainly help. Pretty sure it's uh, Stephen King who doesn't use outlines, as I recall. He uh, gets an idea, kind of keeps it in his head and lets it germinate and grow over a number of months. And then when it, if it's becoming a bigger story, that's when he knows it's a novel. And He just lets it write itself without an outline. I don't know if his son does a similar process or not. I'm kind of curious. I think it's John Irving who is the insanely detailed guy and lays everything out completely 
and wants to know everything, beginning, middle, and end, and all the details and everything, and then writes it, and then spends years editing and fine-tuning it, honing it down to the exact word and phrase and story that he wants. So unsurprisingly, like a lot of other writing tips, writing suggestions, writing tools, they work differently for some people, they work well for some others, and they don't work for some others, and you just need to acknowledge that whenever you're trying something new with writing. My recommendation for this episode, I didn't really have anything new, so I kind of decided to do this writing walks episode today. So I'm going to recommend an old, well not that old, but a book that made a huge impression on me when I read it and has become one of my favorites. I haven't reread it yet because it's a, I think it's a really long book. It's like at least 800 pages, maybe more. And it's Seven Eves by Neil Stephenson. You might know him for um, the big best-selling book, Snow Crash. So in Seven Eves, literally in the first, I believe, sentence of the book, the moon has exploded into a million pieces. I don't think it really ever explains how or why, though... It is one of those things that is technically possible. And so you have all the normal geological changes that happen with the moon being gone. But what the planet realizes pretty soon is that in a number of years, not too many, I think it's like five or less, all these pieces of the moon that have broken into various sizes sizes from, you know, bus-sized boulders, town-sized boulders to smaller pieces are all going to start falling to earth, which seems like your ordinary meteor becoming a meteorite, except because of the variety of the sizes of these pieces and the sheer number of them, it's essentially going to wipe out the planet from your devastating dinosaur ending meteors to smaller ones that still wreak considerable havoc. And so then the planet has this amount of time to decide what to do, to get ready however they can. They can create shelters and bunkers underground, but no one's completely certain if they're gonna fully work or not. And then the other part of the plan is to create space stations and ships and as big of a spacefaring vehicle that you can and to send as many people as they can up into space. I do like that most of the people ending up being women because they're smaller and require less raw materials, less food and necessities and things like that. So you have more women, which is just more entertaining in a book because there's been too many books written by men, about men, and little else. So then eventually we get to the point where the Earth goes through this media shower that ends all life. We're not really sure if if anyone survives on Earth in these underground bunkers. And then the story shifts for the next number of years and decades to the people that have survived in these space stations and how life continues and goes on and how they choose to continue the human race. I think that's about as much plot as I want to give away because There's lots more great stuff that happens, but I don't want to give it all away. The writing is 
it's always good with Stephenson, but it's very detailed. It's not a fast paced book, I'd say, but you're always wanting to keep going to find out what's going to happen next. So that drives you. It's a nice long book, so when you're like a third of the way through, you're absolutely loving it, and you're so happy that there's so much more books still to be read. It came out, I want to say like 2014 maybe, around that, between 2010 I'd say and 2015, you know, somewhere in that range, so a little while ago. So it's available in paperback and ebook. The audiobook is actually read by Mary Robinette Cole, who's another best-selling author, but she does a really good job of reading it. So I recommend the audiobook. Check with your library right now, because even though the physical libraries are all closed, they have an immense online presence. And with just your library card, you can get access to a ton of free materials like ebooks and audiobooks, um, even newspapers and magazines too. So be sure to check into that. Just go to your library website. I'm sure it's all there for you. So you might be able to find the audiobook for 70s there. I'm sure you can buy the ebook. Check with your local bookstore, or one of the big bookstores, Powell's, uh, Strand Bookstore. I know in my county here it's Copperfields Books, which is all online, and you can order everything, including ebooks, all online right now. So if you want to support our local businesses however we can. So once again, that's seven eaves. It's seven, and then E V E S. Seven eaves by Neil Stephenson. All right, this went pretty well. Wraps up our episode nicely today. My trail here did end up going in a circle, which works out well because I can get back to my car and not be too far away from it weather here is good. I haven't really seen another person. There was one person parking just as I was starting to walk. I think he's far behind, so it's been easy to maintain social distance. So this is encouraging for future episodes of Writing Walks. I should be able to make work. You can always reach me at writingwalks at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at bookbanter. There is a Patreon for Writing Walks, patreon.com slash Alex C. Talander. Uh, I put up all the photos that I take for my Writing Walks on there. I do also have a Instagram account. Uh, I think it's instagram.com slash Actoplasm, I want to say, but I'll have it all linked in the show notes. Uh, I put up 10 photos on there because that's what they limit me to from the writing walks. But if you want the full ones, the full set, you can go to again patreon.com slash Alex and there'll be a post there with all the details on the photos and everything I took for this latest writing walks. And right now it's all for free, pretty much. Uh, if you would like to help support the show and are able to at this point in time, I'd greatly appreciate it. And again, you can do that at patreon.com slash And In any way, it's greatly appreciated. I also have a Ko-fi, which you can find linked in the show notes. I'm also starting doing a blog post for each episode on the Patreon. Again, free, so you can just follow the link and go to it. Not sure what this one will be. The last one where I talked about parenting, the post was about how my son never really had a choice about reading and writing in some ways it seems because he was born and slept for, well continues to sleep for years under all our books on the bookcases around him where his bed is and Knowing that we were writers, he got interested in writing and has since started to work on his own writing, which is awesome, because he's only six. 
But that's what that blog post was about. So uh, stay tuned for a blog post for this episode. Again, one last time, that's patreon.com slash Alex C. Talander. If you guys have any suggestions for future topics you'd like to see on here, let me know. I will do another poll towards the end of April or whenever I'm getting ready to do my next episode. And for now, thank you once again for joining me. I really appreciate it, especially with everything we're going through now. The usual stuff, stay at home, maintain social distance, wash your hands. And I know it seems pretty dark right now, and it's not going to be a quick change. It's not going to be a case of in a month, in six months' time, we're just going to flip a switch and everything will go back to normal. It's going to be a long, gradual process. But we're going to work together, we're going to stick together, and we'll get through this just like we have through everything else. Thanks again, and see you on the next Riding Walks.